Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is about a new technique of soldering that I'm going to add. And right now I have two ways of soldering. I've got a conventional uh, soldering station, this one over here, which is a T12 clone. Uh, this thing I built myself like two or three years ago. There's a video on my channel. And I've got this hot air rework station over here, which is a WER8 uh, 58d plus which i also reviewed on the channel now the thing is uh, conventional soldering iron works for the most part uh, sometimes i'm using the hot air rework station uh, but the downside is um, if you are going to solder smd components with a lot of legs using a conventional soldering iron is not really easy and using a hot air rework station you can easily blow away SMD components. And for that reason I search for a different way of soldering components. Alright, now this may look a bit odd, but hear me out first. This over here is a ceramic heating element originally designed to heat up terrariums. And this heating element can be screwed in in a standard um, light bulb uh, thread thingy fixture. Yeah, whatever this is called. The thing the bulb goes inside, you screw it in. And it runs off of the uh, typical 240 volts within Europe, or if you buy it uh, in another country, it has also the ability to run on 120, but obviously a different version. And here's the interesting part. This ceramic heating element is completely based on emitting infrared. This heating element in particular is a 200 and 50 watt heating element and I wasn't quite sure if this is going to work so I already tested it and uh, I wouldn't make this video if it wasn't working um, we will go into everything in a moment and we'll try this over here you may have already seen that uh, these are the remains of one of my broken uh, bug boost converters that I used as a test subject and we will reassemble most components that I still have to see how good it works. So this is one of these uh, light bulbs. It has 250 watt. It's for 220 to 240 AC. And it's a pretty simple thing. You grab one of these light bulbs. You get a light thingy. Screw it inside. Yeah, works pretty good. And then you have essentially an infrared heater that can be used for soldering and yeah it is as simple as that all right and now that i have also plugged in the light because you're not supposed to screw in light bulbs or similar stuff into these fixtures if there is still uh, a main voltage on them so i had to stop the video and now we are good to go and yeah um if i just start it up you can't see anything this thing just gets hot if you're going to ever uh, do this try one try to use one of these and i just saw this thing is nasty i have to clean it be very really careful um depending on the heater you get and it's not so relying on how much wattage they can produce it's the wattage rating is essentially what they emit in form of heat and uh, they can have very high surface temperatures up to 900 degrees celsius uh, this particular one has i think was 450 uh, but yeah be really careful it is hot let me just uh, arrange a few things uh, make everything ready and then we can start uh, testing all right all the necessary Preparations are done, at least the ones that I'm going to do off camera. I attached the thermocouple uh, over here. We're not going to glue it down with carbon tape on the heating element itself, as this uh, may or may not cause damage to it if it heats up. But definitely the carbon tape I have is not capable of withstanding more than 450 degrees Celsius. So uh, this should be good enough. Uh, the hood over here is also uh, held in place with a lot of additional cap and tape this thing will get hot and i do not want it to uh well to fall off because this can easily happen with this bad ikea design 
And uh, here we have the thermocouple. I only have this uh, one thermometer, so uh, yeah, I have to switch because I'm also going to use a second thermocouple that will be used uh, to monitor temperature directly on the PCB. And this is the test subject that we are going to use and solder components to. All right. Now all the components are in place and we can go ahead and uh, solder it. But I have to set up my second camera as I want you guys to see how the solder um, well, flows. Okay, as you can see, I had to remove the lamp uh, hood um, because with it you couldn't really see what's going on. I haven't started the soldering process, so this is as we just uh, finished it. Um, but I removed the um, this hood thing around it, and now we can get a better angle and actually start. Now, one downside is that I now can no longer uh, reliably measure the heat of the surface. So I have to do it manually, and uh, yeah, so we will see how it goes. But that's a quick update. But if you're going to use one of these, I highly recommend you use a protection around it, as this is a ceramic heating element, which can easily break, and it gets freaking hot. I mean, be careful. All right, everything is prepared. Camera one is set up, camera two is set up. You can see that I have the thermometer uh, in the screen of camera number one. You see the components in the background. Camera number two is focused on the Axel Semi uh, IC. And before we actually start the test, let me just quickly uh, measure the distance between um, the heating element and this uh, scrap wood. And as you can see, I also used some scrap wood. Now we are four centimeters away uh, with the heating element. I used some scrap wood to protect my tabletop surface. And now let's start the test. The heating element is now powered on. And I will probe around with my uh, thermometer. You may be able to see it when I go into the frame. I'll touch it. As you can see, it starts up. Uh, or rather it heats up and yeah let's see how quick this goes now as you can see we are at 215 almost 220 I should maybe move this bit away it's underneath uh, the heating element uh, I don't want it to melt And temperature still climbs but it's way slower and uh, maybe I have to move the heating element a bit closer so let's see what the temperature is of the heating element itself now again uh, remember we are four centimeters away and it would go much quicker if it was actually closer so the heating element is at yeah Oh, we are above 400. Very interesting. So, yeah, and as I can see, or maybe you can also see, the flux of the solder paste is now very, very liquidy. And it should melt any moment. You may be able to see we don't need the temperature measurement any longer uh, you can see we have molten and yeah it is a steady state at 450 degrees Celsius surface temperature of this heating element so the first test was just the first test it was not really accurate but as you can see it seems like everything has properly molten yeah nice so we can I think stop the heating element and it's now turned off and I can just oh this is really hot I can remove it move it out of the way in a safe place for me not to get burned and now we can take a closer look on the PCB or at the PCB once this is cooled down because this thing is very hot yeah I should have measured 
the temperature more but yeah I think you you get the point I mean it, it works okay it, it actually reflows the solder soldiers components in place surface temperature 450 we are somewhere in the like um, so I just double checked and yes the solder paste that I'm using is supposed to melt at 180 183 degrees Celsius so uh, it was way beyond that point I think uh, measuring on one of the metal pads is not very um, telling anything um, yeah I'm not really experienced with that I should have attached one of the probes on the PCB but that was just too difficult I mean you get the point it works and we can now observe the solder joints Unfortunately, I had a programmer function and as you saw, there was no secondary footage while soldering. And the footage that I recorded afterwards when I was inspecting the solder joints is even worse, so I have to use the uh, footage from the time when I was soldering. And what you can see over here is right after the solder has flown and we can see that we have plenty of solder on the diode on the left uh, it's too much but that can happen it's not a big deal but as you can see it is properly molten and if we take a look on all of the five legs from the main controller i see every leg is properly soldered in place but the two in the back have a small solder bridge in between that can just happen but a, a quick touch up with a soldering iron would do the job and now from another angle, the same controller I see, just another piece of footage that I was able to save. We can now more clearly see all of its legs. They are properly soldered in place. And we have, as previously mentioned, the small solder bridge, uh, but this can easily be solved. And if we take a look on the left to the IC, we have this silver shining alongside it, and that indicates that we have probably flown the solder underneath. If we take a look on the bottom right, it's hard to see, but we also have probably flown the solder underneath uh, one of the two pads of the inductor. And if we take a look on the top, we can see that there is a small solder ball sticking out from underneath one of the pads of the electrolytic capacitor. And just like that, the rest of the solder joints looked pretty much the same. Uh, everything was properly soldered in place. Um, we had certain issues with me applying too much solder paste, but that's not a problem of the uh, heating element or the method of infrared soldering. It's something I have to learn. Uh, but trust me, everything was probably soldered in place. After I finished this initial test, I did a bit more testing, and there are two things that I would like to mention. Uh, number one, you are limited to very small pieces, work pieces, with one of these uh, heating elements. They do not have enough power nor the surface area to work on big pieces. And number two, I would highly recommend you let the uh, heating element heat up to its maximum surface temperature before setting it on top of your workpiece, just to limit the time that you apply heat to it. Although, if you have it set up like I did, the heat would gradually increase, but uh, the shorter the time is you apply heat to any component, the better it is and the less likely it is to get damaged in the process. However, I'm no longer using this heating element for soldering, um, considering the time it takes to heat up and then the time it takes to solder components in place, I am better off using my um, uh, heat gun. Uh, it is another way for me to solder components in place, but I'm now using it to preheat PCBs. When I started working on a GPU, I had uh, to preheat the PCB using my heat gun and it takes some time if you're working on the power delivery section because we have a lot of copper in this area and uh, GPUs and mainboards and stuff like that they have multi-layer PCB a lot of copper and <laughs> so you have to preheat uh, for you to be quicker soldering like MOSFETs uh, off of the PCB or onto the PCB. But that requires you to be physically there and move the heat gun uh, over the area. And it, again, takes a few minutes. What you could do instead with a heating element like this is simply get the GPU or whatever you're working on in place, 
get one of these light fixtures, the heating element on top, turn it on and it takes like two or three minutes and the GPU or the PCB you're working on is in at around 100 to 105 degrees Celsius, at least in, in my case. Uh, it is quicker if you go closer, but I'm, I think I'm six centimeters away typically. So it takes two to three minutes from cold to warm for it to heat up. So it's quick and uh, gets you to a temperature. 100 degrees is typically a preheating temperature that is considered to be safe. And then you can just work on whatever you work more quickly and you don't have as much heat sinking away from uh, the spot you're working on. So I hope you liked the video and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below. And other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!